Hey, these five minutes of habits have made me millions. Sounds simple, but it's five one minute things that, that habit wise, if you apply these are gonna change the way that you show up in your day, show up in your operations every single moment. And honestly, these are the game changers that people don't they don't pay attention to. It's it's quick things, right? Our life can get derailed in a, in a singular moment. Before we know, we can be having one path and all of a sudden we're on a new path and we look back and go, how did I get down this path? When did I make this choice? When did this decision come into play to put me here? So I'm gonna break down the single things that I have done to add time and money to my life. It's a big piece, right? Because value is not always predicated upon, I think in my opinion, money. It's also time, it's freedom. Can I experience what I want to experience the way I want to experience it? Can I do what I want when I want? It's a big piece of life and control and having some sense of ownership of what you got going in your days. And so as we break this down, I want you to pay attention because for me, when I started implementing these habits, I was able to separate myself from really the constant frantic pace of trying to get everything done the way most people live. They live in this, this honest, consistent speed that just drives them crazy and they can never find more time or find more money because they can't figure out how to how to manage this to get to that. And so when I look at these habits, they're they're really unique and simple, which is a good thing. But it's how you frame them, how you look at them. The way I look at them may be different from how you look at them. But if you don't pay attention to this, you're going to be wasting your time. Now you can choose to tie these and apply these. Great. You can also choose to keep making excuses and not having what you want in life. And if that's the case, then by all means, keep doing that. But if you want something, stop making excuses and listen to these habits so you can actually work in your life in different ways ways because nowadays people see honestly every day thousands of marketing messages every single day thousands you see from your phone to driving by to tv to everything youtube social media it's always there it's everywhere and the idea is if you have this device in your hand that's feeding you pumping you stuff every day it, it really slows the whole process and it distracts us so we actually must fight for our time and our attention to create earned income you got to fight for it if you don't fight for it, you don't get it and so these five habits are ones that they're, sometimes they're hard i'll be honest they're hard to do sometimes, but if you want to have anything of worthwhile in your life, it's going to be hard to get it. So the first of five is just to say no. It's that simple saying no, man. I know how people work because I'm a person. We've been around a lot of people and people like to be desired. We like people to want us, to like us, to appreciate us. We want that. We as human beings, we crave it. And so what happens is we will say yes to things we really should say no to out of the sheer desire to be desired. Like I know people in life who they they never say no. And I go, why is that? Because I can do it. Well, I know you can do it, but you're doing it for them. What about doing it for you? At what point in time did you become less than them, less than their needs, less than their appreciation? At what point in time did you become less? So what has to happen is you have to be able to go into the world and say, no. No, I don't want to do that. Or I can't do it. Now, I do realize some people may have time because they have certain processes put in place. But I noticed that one unique thing can take place so you can feel comfortable saying no, because sometimes we don't want to say no out of the fear of feeling guilty because we could have done it. And here's what it looks like. You step in and go, I can't do that because I have this going on at that time. Easy. I have this going on at that time. And if you don't have something going on, well, maybe you start looking at your life and go, I should put things into my schedule so I can say no, because here's what happens. If you say yes to something already right now and someone comes along and goes, hey, can you do it? If you say yes to them, you're saying no to something you already said yes to. I told myself, yes, I go get a workout. And they go, hey, you want to go to the bar? Yeah, I'll go. I got to say no to the, the yes for working out I just gave myself. And it doesn't lead to anything great except for you going around saying, okay, I'm, I'm liked by people, but maybe you're not liked by you now. Maybe you didn't get things done that you needed to get done. And now we're in a window of time where you don't have the window left. It's eating itself up because you're doing things it should have been doing. So saying no saves you from having that moment of regret for yourself, regret for not getting something completed. So this no is a powerful tool, man. It's it's also no to yourself. No to eating that, doing that, saying that, getting around those people. No to yourself. You should be able to tell yourself, no, it's not a good fit for you. Hey, you gotta get a better opportunity, better environment, better room. No, right? This, this It sounds weird, but even like when I parent my kids, I'm like a no. <laughs> and then you gotta talk me into a yes. Because no has power. So many people say yes all the time that no tells people that you hold your your time with respect. You hold yourself with a certain level of respect and they can't just step in and take that from you. So no is a very great holding ground to be able to say, look, I, I know my worth. I know what I want to do. I don't want to do that. I'm going to say no to you right now. I respect you, but I got something in place. So saying no is a simple, quick, less than a minute habit that frees up your
your time. It allows me to create what I want to create in the time frame I want to create it so I can make the impact and income I choose to make. If not, I'd be a, like a leaf in the whim on everybody else's desires. But I know what I want to get done, so I got to say no to you because I've already said yes to my dream. So what's your dream you said yes to? Now, if you know what it is, locked in, say no to anything that threatens that dream coming to life. That's how you got to live. Habit number two, it's really simple. It's email yourself links to carts. This is a money saver and a time saver. I find myself scrolling through the internets, finding little cool ads that pop up and clicking buttons and researching and reading this. And I said, no, I say, well, this product exists. Are there other products like that? So I go to Google, I'm searching something. My time disappears because I'm over here searching on a product that I just saw just now. Next thing I know, 30 minutes later, I'm like, I lost a half an hour looking up a supplement for greens. Did I need to do that in the middle of my day? No, I didn't need to do that the middle of my day. Maybe at night I could, but this was just a waste of my time. But I also find that sometimes I'll get enamored by the marketing of something. I'll go, I'm going to buy that. Now I'm out money too, time and money. So what I do is I email myself. If I'm interested in something, I will pull it up in my browser, send an email to myself. And then what I do is that my emails like my to-do list, I'll scroll and I'll look at it and I'll go, do I still want to look into that? If I say yes, I'll pull it up and look at it. Or if I put something that I want to buy in the cart, I email myself a link to the cart and I'll go ahead and I won't buy now. But what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll put it down there and the next day when I take a look at my email, I'll go, do I really want to buy that? And in the moment, if I don't go, yeah, I want it, I delete the email, move on my day. It's in the past. I, I press on. No big deal, right? This has given me so much more time. It's also saved me money because I, I don't buy something that's multiple thousands of dollars that I don't actually need. I just happen to be marketed to and go, oh, it's, it's a cool thing. And, and we do that. We'll just buy things because they look cool and they really don't actually need them. So emailing yourself things that are things you want to spend time researching or possibly buying gives you that that moment to pause and pull back and not be so engaged in it right now to ask yourself later do i actually want this if the answer is no step away now number three is to say i trust you to figure it out what does this mean i get a lot of conversations with people who ask me to do things that i can do and or they we have a plan in place and there's a spot within that plan that they don't have a skill set or an awareness or knowledge of something and typically what we do is we give ourselves homework hey you know what i know you don't want to do it but i do i'll i'll, I'll get it done for i'll figure it out I'll take care of it for you, especially with clients I work with early on in my career. When we get done in between from between now and next Friday, I'll take a look at this and I'll see if I can figure this out. I found myself like spending three or four hours a week on one client. And I go, that's not, that's not how I'm supposed to work. I think for me, I need to be able to have my time back. And if I have 10 clients, that's 40 hours a week. Can't do that. I need to be able to give just that hour. How do I do that? Well, I give, don't give myself homework. First off, I don't take things away from the call to do as tasks. I do it all in the call or in our next call when we show back up. That's based on your structure, your program is, but also I would verbally state to him, you know what? I trust you to figure that out. I know that it's something where I could do it. I could give you some guidance, but here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's the guidance I'm gonna give you. But after this, I, I trust you to figure it out. It empowers people. It makes people have to go find some solution, some step, some, some way to navigate this pitfall without you doing that work. It gives you back time. And to be honest, if you're a, a person with clients, it gives you a little more money because your bandwidth can expand to bring more clients clients on. If not, if say you have, let's say you have 15 hours in a week to work on something and you find that you have, I don't know, let's say three clients and each one you're given five hours to because you're doing extra work after, you can only fit three clients in your schedule. That's it. But what if you could say, you know, I'm only going to give two hours to a client each week. Well, now you can technically put, I don't know, six clients in there, get to about 12 hours, right? So what happens is like, well, if I give those six clients that or seven clients, if I give them two hours, I'm, I'm at 14 hours with my 15 for the week and I can do that. So now I went from three clients to seven clients, which means you make more revenue because you didn't take homework home because you said, hey, I trust you to figure that out. So it can create a difference in, in how you perceive your abilities just by simply saying, I trust you to get it done. I'm not going to take that homework home third habit. The fourth habit is ask yourself, is this a shiny object? There's a lot of us that got shiny object syndrome. Man, I had that. I would buy up every software program tool that made videos and did audios and put pictures and all, all these cool things, right? And I'm like, it's a cool, I could do this for this. And I would find myself so far in the left field that I was never getting anything done that needed to be get done. Like it was nothing was getting completed because I was looking at different things. And I found myself realizing these are just shiny objects. I don't need this thing. It just, it seems cool, but it's not really going to move the needle for me. So you know what I'm going to do? Not pay attention to that. I'm going to ask myself, is this actually useful or just a shiny object? Does this distract me and pull my attention in a way that keeps me away from the tasks at hand? Or is it really useful? And it's, there's an answer. The answer is either yes or no. If the answer is yes, it's a shiny object, then you stop. 
You just, it's that simple. You just stop. You go back to your task at hand. You don't go somewhere or buy something or read something. You just literally just stop, right? If the answer is no, it's not a shiny object. You ask yourself, how can this fit into the process? Where can this benefit me? How can I make revenue with this or money with this or impact with this? Or how can I create more time for my life with this? So that's where sometimes a shiny object's come into play. And if it's not a shiny object, not a problem. But if it is, you've got to be able to step in and go, ah, can't focus on it right now. Got to get back to the task at hand. So ask yourself that question when you find yourself enthralled by something or being a, a pulled towards it, attracted towards it. That's a question you got to ask. And then step five, this takes less than a minute to do. It's called setting a timer. That's it. Like really unfinished projects add countless hours to your day because what happens is you step into a window of time to work on something, you get distracted. And then now that hour you're supposed to get done here, it gets pushed till tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day. And it's countless hours all because you keep getting pulled away because you're not focusing. The way that I look at a timer is when it's time to work, I literally have this timer here. This timer for me is the one that I start. Now I don't have it when I do videos because it beeps at the end and I don't want it beeping in the middle of our time. And so this timer comes on and I click it and I go, that's my window. And what it does for me is as long as that's in front of me and on, I'm not checking emails. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not walking out of this room. I'm right here doing what I got to get done. It takes less than a minute to set that thing, but now I get more done. So as opposed to me having to wait for this project to get completed to get to the next one, let's say I didn't get it done and it moves in the next week and the next month. Well, I'm pushing off the success of my life farther and farther because I can't get this done. But if I get it done, I can bring the next thing into my life. Get it done. Next thing comes in. Next thing comes in. Next thing comes in because the timer allowed me to sit down, knock off tasks, get things moved, and then I can keep myself progressing. If you don't do this, if you don't spend time focusing on what's at hand and getting it done, you will lose countless hours of life. And then what happens is now it costs me time and it costs me money. But these habits and places have made me millions of dollars over my years in business simply because I'm not lost in a whirlwind like everybody else. I, I say no to people. I hold my boundaries ruthlessly. If I can't do it, I'm saying no to you. I love you, but I don't love you enough to say no to my own self. I love myself too. Email yourself links to diminish your, your time spent looking at something or buying something that costs you money that you really don't need to be spending in the first place. Make sure you say to people, I trust you to figure that out. Empower other people to solve their own stinking problems. It's okay. People need to have those skill sets. I can solve my problems because I've solved my problems because some people didn't solve them for me, right? Same thing when it comes to you and your life. Find a way to do it. Ask yourself, is this thing I'm facing a shiny object? If this thing is a shiny object, find a way to, to look away. If it's not, engage it, bring it in. And then number five, set a timer. Get a timer. Seriously, go find an egg timer on the internet. Set a timer. Start your work on those hours. If you can focus on that, you'll get way more done. And this is how you'll get to the momentum you need to create this change of life you want by having more time and more money freedom overall. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch this one right here. It's a game changer if you apply it. All these things that I teach you, they could be good, but only good if you actually apply them. But if you apply this one, it'd be amazing for your life. That's it. Take care. And as always, make the most of your off shift moments and do the dark work so you can make shift happen.